This is a Pentax P30T. It's a film SLR from one of photography's most awkward periods, the introduction of autofocus. Autofocus is something we take for granted today, and people like Jared Poland can't help but deride any modern mirrorless machine that doesn't hold eye contact with him while he bounces and twirls in front of the latest RZ or A7 Mark whatever. But the P30T is not an autofocus camera. It is among the last of the real manual focus SLRs. Let me explain. We might forget about Pentax these days, even if just 10 years ago they held a special place in the market. Embraced by art-inspired millennials producing good glass and respectable cameras, just as the digital era was finally coming into its own. This was a lovely continuation of the success they enjoyed in the 70s and 80s when Asahi Pentax and the K1000 ruled the scene. Pentax was the first Japanese manufacturer to release an SLR all the way back in 1952. They have a storied history and earned the respect they once commanded. The year was 1990 and autofocus was the innovation driving change and sales in the camera market. Nikon, Canon, and Minolta had it. Pentax had it too. But Pentax had these lovely little cameras. The P-Series, introduced in the late 80s and named after their leading feature, Program Auto Exposure. Well, program mode shouldn't impress anyone outside of a snap shooter. These were actually very nice little cameras. There was the original P30 and P50 in 86 and 87, respectively, each lasting three years in the market. The P30N arrived in 88, but disappeared just as quickly in 1990. But for some reason, this little P30T lasted. It lasted seven years, discontinued only in the same year as that venerable photographic hammer, the K1000. And that was it. No more manual focus Pentax cameras. Okay, fair. There was the MZM, the so-called spiritual successor to the K1000, available from 98 to 2000, but no one really picked up that rehashed marketing rot. The MZM had some merits, namely its lightweight and backward lens compatibility alongside some modern exposure options, but it's a plastic fantastic trash fire, lacking a genuine pentaprism, having swapped it out for a mirrored reverse periscope for TTL perspectives. Meanwhile, these P cameras featured somewhat simplified controls to evoke an elegant form meets function look and feel. They were attractive, consumer-level SLRs, compatible with the entire range of K-mount lenses that Pentax had been producing for so many years. Lenses you can still find today at a fraction of the price of a comparable Nikkor, even if that discount isn't really justified. DX codes were used to eliminate film speed selection, perfect if you're a box speed kind of photographer, Jason. Mirror lockup, exposure compensation, and multiple exposure options were eliminated because exposing your girlfriend's face over a beautiful flower had gone out of fashion around 1983. But set aside notions that this was just some consumer junk. It retained the depth of field preview button and accepts a cable release, albeit on the side of the body. But before you get bent out of shape about the lack of manual ISO control, remember that's missing from the Contax T2 along with complete manual control over aperture. This is not an LX or A-series Pentax. It's no F3, nor even an AE-1, but it's an elegant, effective, and modern SLR that's perfect for someone who wants to make photographs out of film while skipping out on the hipster trappings of a 70s-inspired chrome-bodied beast. And maybe, just maybe that's why the P30T lasted so very long, and only fell into the sunset alongside of one of Pentax's best, marking the end of an enduring era and participating in the send-off of film photography's golden years.